Hello, and welcome to our January 2020 virtual info session where we're going to talk to you today about field education at the Brown School at Washington University in St. Louis. We're so excited that you've taken the time to come and spend with us to learn about field ed at the Brown School. So, my name is Jewel Stafford. I am the Associate Director in the Office of Field Education. And along with me today, I brought some of my coolest friends who are doing practicum here at the Brown School. And before we sort of get started, I'm just gonna invite the panelists to introduce themselves, tell me a little bit about their hometown, give us a sense of who you are before we get into the business of the day. Keandra, I'll start with you. Uh, so my name is Keandra Harvey. I am from Detroit, Michigan mm -hmm. and uh, Practicum. Well, yeah, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. I am a dual second year MSW MPH student, um, two of three years. So, yes. so yeah, <laughs> it's a little bit about me. <laughs> Thank Got you. Taylor. Uh, I'm Taylor Brown. I use he, him, his pronouns. I'm from Paragould, Arkansas. Um, it's northeast rural Arkansas and I'm an advanced standing MSW student. I'm concentrating in domestic, social, and economic development, and I'm specializing in uh, research and policy. Hi, I'm Sarah Cass. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm from Princeton, New Jersey, um, central New Jersey, and I am in my second year of my MSW. Um, my concentration is domestic, social, and economic development, Taylor, and I'm specializing in system dynamics. Um. Great. So please feel free to use your chat feature and submit your questions. Um, we're really excited to make sure that you are as a part of this presentation as we are here to answer your questions. So before we get into a little bit about what our panelists have been able to do with their practicum, we're just going to talk a little bit about what this whole practicum thing looks like at the Brown School. And so let's have a little bit more details about what practicum looks like at the Brown School. So um, we are very unique in that it is a self-guided process. We like to say it's a little bit like Home Depot. You can do it and we can help. You get to choose your own site. We have lots of opportunities on campus and we start with a practicum fair in the fall semester just so you can get a sense of who are the um, field instructors and what are the opportunities in our region. We also support you with having conversations with the field advisors. So what I do as a field advisor is I ask you questions about your skills your career trajectory and things that you might want to gain from your practicum and we match those experiences that you'd like to gain along with potential opportunities. So it's a self-guided process. Um, we, because we don't match you, we want to make sure that we give you as much support as we possibly can. So we have field advisor of the day hours posted and we also encourage you to meet with a field advisor. And then we also want you to choose a site that is specifically aligned with the goals that you've identified that you wanted to accomplish when you got here at the Brown School. And we also have conversation partners for really difficult or new experiences in the field. And if there are things that you really want to do outside of the box that are not within our current affiliation experiences. We work with you to affiliate, as essentially to have other experiences with uh, field organizations locally, nationally, and internationally. We have an extensive array of sites. We have over 400 sites located nationally, locally within the region, and internationally and we also want to make sure that we give you an opportunity to affiliate new sites so again we're self-guided we're supportive but we also have an extensive array of opportunities for you to select your sites so for our masters of social work our msw our foundation curriculum includes 360 hours of practicum which comes out to mean three credits you also have a integrative seminar that is also a course that's designed to help process your experiences, especially if it's your first time in practicum. 
It happens within the spring semester and the summer semester, and your foundation experience has to be in, in a practicum that is located in the region of St. Louis. So it's not gonna be anything that's international or out of state. We first want you to have something local. But if you are a concentration student, you have 600 hours of practicum experience, which leads to five credits of your practicum. It's usually your second year, and it's related to your MSW concentration. Um, those experiences can be split up across the semesters. You can do a summer practicum out of state. You can also use some of your concentration credits to do an international practicum, and we can talk a little bit about that later. If you're advanced standing, which means you already have your BSW and you are applying to come into the school as an advanced standing um, student, then you, again, will be completing 600 hours, and your first spring and your summer have to be related to your MSW concentration, and now there's an opportunity to start your concentration in the fall but we also have your academic advisor and a field advisor that is lined up specifically with you to help you start that search process um, and get you on your way. For our master's in public health, you have a 360 hour practicum, again, three credits. You usually do this in your summer um, between your first and your second year, um, but Keandria can talk to you a little bit about some of the nuances around that. And you will work specifically with someone who will help guide you as a public health professional through your career and a learning experience in the field. So that's MPH. And then we've got duals. So for duals, if you are an MSW MPH, you will start with your foundation your first year. You'll do 360 hours just like the foundation students. You'll have your integrative seminar, You'll have your first spring or summer um, seminar experience. Again, your first foundation experience should be in St. Louis. It has to be local. Then your second year, you're really sort of focusing on um, your public health courses and curriculum. And then you get to do your dual practicum, which is 360 hours. And that should have an MSW MPH. Um, competency um, approved affiliated site and then you'll complete your concentration practicum for 240 hours which equals two credits so that's sort of the breakdown for our um, concentrations and our practicum overview for some of our um, field appropriate levels any questions Please use the chat feature. I'm sure you have questions. I am more than willing to help sort of get you through some of the nuances of that. Okay, great. So, one of the things that makes Brown unique, uh, the Brown School unique, is the fact that we do not match you. We really want to work collaboratively with you to select something that is aligned with your particular goals and the skills that you want to obtain. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go across to the panel because I think you've heard enough from me. And I'm going to ask you all to describe your agency, your experiences, your roles. Just tell us a little bit about your practicum experiences so far at the Brown School. And I'm going to open it up. Uh, so I so currently I've completed my foundation practicum and I'm working on my uh, concentration, my MSW concentration level uh, practicum. Mm -hmm. So my first uh, foundation practicum was at Siteman for the Program for Elimination of Cancer Disparities, mm -hmm. um, which is, it tailors outreach information and educational resources for patients who are um, diagnosed with cancer, but also may be in the, may be looking to see if they have uh, if they will be diagnosed with cancer or just understanding if they're ta taking care of someone who has cancer or um, all of those all of those things associated with cancer um, so they work closely with different with the Barnes Jewish uh, Hospital and making sure that there are different clinics and hospitals around the city of St. Louis and its border areas um, well border counties to make sure that there's resources available 
Um, so for me, I was able to create one of their resource guides, their breast cancer resource guide. Nice. And yeah, it was one of those things where I took resources from uh, different agencies of uh, health agencies, insurance agencies, uh, different things that were tailored towards breast cancer and put them in a resource that's that could be disseminated to um, in health fairs um, in different clinics and hospitals and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And I worked to try and get all of those things together uh, with different gave me a really good experience to work with the co organizations in St. Louis mm -hmm. and understand uh, how how the city works to get those information to get that information out. Um, and currently, well, also had a second project where I worked to see where there was 3D uh, programming for uh, mammograms mm -hmm. in the city of North North St. Louis County. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and now currently I am at the City of St. Louis Department of Health uh, working on a continuation actually of the Breast, Ca Breast Cancer Resource Guide that I created nice. to work with the Show Me Healthy Women program mm -hmm. to get that information out to uh, the different communities that are in late stage diagnosis. And uh, a caveat of other different programs of small <coughs> organizations and things that they have to offer to as well. That sounds like a phenomenal experience. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, so I, being in the, my last semester, um, I've had the opportunity to have finished two practicums, um, and I'm in another two right now. Um, and so I think that that's sort of a really exciting sort of component of the Brown School, being able to divide up the credits. Um, so for my foundation, I worked with a local organization um, a housing ministry that's working on transitioning into a community development corporation um, and that was really great to sort of um, move to St. Louis and have that experience um, and get to learn about all the organizations in the region um, that are supporting that on a local level um, and I was also um, a racial equity fellow at the Brown School um, helping the school to create um, an assessment to figure out where departments are in current processes um, and um, practices regarding um, staffing, faculty, students. Um, and this year I've been really excited to spend my time with We Power, which is an organization that's been around for about a year and a half. And um, they are activating community members to redesign education, criminal justice, healthcare, and economic systems so that they're just and equitable for all. Um, and I'm specifically supporting um, the Tomorrow Builder Fellowship, which is helping um, redesign, expand, and improve quality and access for early childhood education um, through doing research um, and helping community-based events um, to sort of drive our process. Um, and I guess my fourth practicum, <laughs> to touch on it too, um, ask me questions about any of it, I guess, um, is with a representative in the Missouri legislature, and that just started this week. Um, but I'm really excited about that opportunity to learn about state government and sort of connect my um, engagement at the local policy level um, with um, state policies and work for a, a representative who's sort of able to engage with all committees and see the process. So. Fantastic. Great. Uh, I have a very similar practicum trajectory. Uh, I'm advanced standing, so it's a little different. I'm also a racial equity fellow, and uh, I'm with an organization called City Garden Montessori School. They are a school district and a school, and they are targeting um, low-income students of color in a certain community catchment area in St. Louis. And so with this racial equity fellowship, uh, me and another fellow um, act as uh, consultant researchers almost with their director director of racial equity and diversity and uh, we get to conduct um, design and conduct um, a pretty comprehensive analysis of their school district um, it's mixed methods so we look at uh, of course uh, the achievement gap but we also look at funding uh, we look at a variety of measures and then on the qualitative side of it, we get to do focus groups with uh, students and teachers and one-on-one -on -one interviews with administrators and uh, school board members. 
and uh, all of this is culminating into a uh, data walk where we'll present our findings and our report to um, a mixed audience of students and teachers, community members and administrators, um, and we're really evaluating the state of uh, racial equity at the school. And I'm also at Jeff City, in Jeff City. Uh, I'm on the Senate side and uh, working with um, the minority leader there, and I also work with the uh, caucus uh, policy director and uh, get to do a lot of policy and research and strategy, and I'm having a lot of fun with that. Great, thank you all. So I think one of the great things about our school is you have a lot of options. Now, of course, Keandria, Sarah, mm -hmm. and Taylor are the exceptions to a lot of that, but we really encourage you to think about what those possibilities are. And so some people will have one practicum for foundation, one for concentration, but the more that you do your theoretical work, you'll realize that you may want to just create and craft um, and tailor your approaches to your practicum differently. So it looks like we have a question from the audience. How does the Brown School assign supervisors for each practicum? That's a great question. So one of the things that we do, especially for our um, MSW students, is what seminar you are choosing. So the seminar section that you're choosing, that person, that seminar instructor becomes your field advisor. And we have over ugh, 400 sites and the person who is at your site is your field instructor. They're your educator in the field and we are your educator at the school. So the terms may be a little confusing, but essentially everything that you do here at the school is essentially self-guided. So you choose your seminar um, and then you choose, that's how you're choosing your field advisor. And um, you also choose your practicum and then you also get to um, have your field instructor. Great question. Okay, let's see. It seems here we also have a question from the audience about for many prospective students, the idea of selecting your own practicum site is both exciting and a little daunting. Mm -hmm. So can you talk about what your practicum search was like? How did you find your site? And how many places did you interview? So how did you decide where you were gonna end up? Uh, I definitely looked through a lot of different places. <laughs> There was a, quite a few interviews that I went through. So yes, I am going to agree that it can be coming in. There's a lot of pressure. Find your, find your practicum, find your practicum as soon as you come in, even from orientation. And it's, it seems like a lot, mm -hmm. but once you break it down, it, honestly, it's not as bad as it seems. Everyone else is just talking about it. So it seems like it's a bigger deal than what it actually is. Um, but for myself, I did a little research prior to the practicum fair. Uh, and after I did the practicum fair, I talked to quite a few different organizations that, was, that were there. Um, I chose a few that I was interested in or things that I didn't think that I would be interested in, but say like, oh, there's something similar that I could see myself doing. Um, so I reached out, gave them my resume and uh, say, hey, I'm interested in this, uh, in this organization. What, it, what is it that you all do and how can I see myself best fit in this organization? Mm -hmm. And once I figured out which ones I, I narrowed down, which ones I really wanted to, um, I did about maybe four or five interviews with different places and organizations. Um, after the first round and hearing a little bit more about what they wanted to do or how they saw fit for um, me to be placed into those organizations, I said, mm, I don't really see that as the navigate or the trajectory that I want myself to go on. Um, I remember finally one that uh, was similar to some type of experience that I had before working in schools and working mm -hmm. with students, which was like, oh, okay, this is fine. But I realized that I had that type of experience already and I didn't want to continue that. So I decided to say, I dropped out all of the ones that I actually had uh, had petitioned for. And there was one, well, PCAT was the one that 
I thought I wasn't going to hear back from. Mm. And eventually uh, reaching back out to my field instructor, she was, she was, she stated to me like, yeah, sorry, it was moving a little slow. And I was able to get an interview and actually talking to her really made the experience really like, oh, okay, this is something that I want to do. And I could see myself really working um, in the community because that's what I really wanted yes. and getting a little bit of education about health and working with minority communities. So, yeah, I think that's, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Great. Oh, oh. Looks like we have oh, okay. a couple more questions yeah. from the audience. Are there international practicum experiences related to health and refugees? Yes, mm -hmm. um, there are. And we have an entire website for, um, called the Global Program Organization. And we have uh, Tammy Orahood. She manages a lot of our international practicum experiences. And so for those of you who are interested in having an international experience, the minute you decide to uh, come to the Brown School, we will put you in touch with Tammy and she can explain the process to you. But the very short answer to that is yes, we do. Um, we also have organizations that are local that also deal, um, that have international ties mm -hmm. and work with um, organiz with, that work with populations um, that are dealing with health and that are dealing with refugees. One of those organizations is the International Institute, um, and they are a really good collaborative partner with us as well. And then someone also wanted to know, can you please provide information regarding mental health practicum opportunities? Great, yes. That, they are more of our selective and high demand opportunities. And one of the things that we really ask our students who want to think about doing a mental health practicum opportunity are, what type of skills do you want to have? Are you looking for assessment skills? Are you looking to do more cognitive behavioral therapy? Are there more modalities that you're thinking about engaging in? Are there hospital social work opportunities? So we have um, really amazing mental health practicum opportunities and we work with you and our mental health concentration chair to tailor those particular experiences to what it is that you want to do. Now, we're going to get back to Taylor and Sarah to see if they want to add anything about their practicum search process. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I really enjoyed the practicum search process. Uh, I thought it was exciting. Not as scary as I thought it would be. Really enjoyed uh, networking and just learning about all the different organizations and things going on in the area. I'm not from St. Louis, um, but all the places I did an interview with that I was interested in, could, I was able to like reach out to someone at an organization and get to know them. And it's just a really cool networking opportunity. And um, I think what was most important for me to learn when choosing my practicum site was, again, the skills I wanted to learn on the macro side. Um, there's a lot of skills that you can learn and specialize in, and uh, that's how I made my decision, uh, looking at the gaps in my experiences. Um, so I think two of my practicum experiences were made through like experiences that were created by the Brown School, I'd say specifically, and so um, finding them were through talking to um, fields education and learning about the Racial Equity Fellowship and then applying to that and then being placed um, at the Brown School for me, but obviously Taylor is placed at a different institution, um, and Jeff City. Um, and so I think the, the Jeff City being able to work in state um, government was something that I knew I wanted to do coming into the Brown School. And then for my other two um, practica, the um, I think there's a lot of pressure to figure it out um, right away, which I think um, Kendra mentioned. Um, and I think that I, I was sort of less, um, had less of an urgency for it, which I think allowed me to sort of see what guest speakers came to class, talk to my professors, and get to know a lot of people in the community. Um, and so I kind of narrowed down my interests and then interviewed with a, a smaller group. I think I only interviewed for one and one, I like talked to a couple of other organizations informally um, because I, I kind of decided what I wanted maybe a little bit later in the process um, than what Field Ed wants, but it, it worked out and that allowed me to 
um, sort of focus on the skills to mm -hmm. complement the coursework. Fantastic. So we have a couple related questions. Um, one of them being, while students get to choose their own practicum, is there a list that the Brown School provides of all the options that students can look into, or is it the responsibility of each student to find their own placement? What did you all think about that process? Uh, simplicity is a is a place that <laughs> it is a place. <laughs> it's a place with a love hate relationship uh, that gives really good um it has some places that you can do internships and or practicums at um but there is a way to so they give a list mm -hmm. yes there's a list that comes to the practicum fair yes and then there's another hidden list of where you find for yourself <laughs> um what inst which ones you want to go to um which organization and you can if you see one if you see an organization of which that you want to um, work with and they don't they're not on the site reach out to them and find someone that mm -hmm. you can speak with so it's a little bit of both um, it's an all-around process so whatever you need help with you can also go to the field advisors as well um, they normally have some behind the scenes um, uh, connections but also people organizations that may fit you better for what you're looking for too so absolutely what you all think about the process um, so I think I mentioned this a little bit before, but I think some of the opportunities that I found were through classes or through professors. Um, and I think that also as I continued this year, I continued to meet um, additional um, organizations or representatives from organizations in classes, which I think um, sort of provide you with a direct connection. Um, I think that simplicity gives you the nice opportunity to see various past practicum or course descriptions, which um, can be helpful because we have the flexibility to identify an organization and then come up with a practicum or interview, and so there might not be a specific job description, and having that resource to, to know what potential jobs could look like for practicum students is helpful, and then be able to take mm -hmm. it in the direction you want. Um, but I definitely think, I think I've met with almost every different field at advisor at some point um, before sort of like selecting one and then signing up for that seminar and also just like getting um, a range of, of people's backgrounds and experiences with community partners. Mm -hmm. cool. And there are just two things to add to that. I met with um, Barbara, mm -hmm. she's a, my advisor, um, mm -hmm. pretty frequently at the beginning of my first semester here and whenever I'd see her um, in the hallway, I'd ask her uh, about different things too. And your advisors are just like a wealth of knowledge in the area. And whenever they get to know you, um, they can provide a lot of mentoring and kind of guiding you into the right direction for you. Um, and then also, um, in the middle of my first semester here, I was given the cheat sheet of <laughs> all of the macro social work oriented uh, field placements that have mm -hmm. been done in the past and that was super helpful to like uh, rule out the ones I wasn't interested in and then check the ones I wanted to ask more about. Um, I don't know where that cheat sheet <laughs> is. Yeah. I can yes. uh, scan Each of it us if have anyone. One. Okay, great. Well, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to say I'm not sure it existed when I started and I got that about a month ago for, for macro sort of domestic social and economic yeah. development which I think will be really useful for students, incoming students in the future. Mm -hmm. Totally. Definitely. Yes. Yep. Great. Um, now there's another question that's related um, to submitting your intent to enroll. So um, I think this more is for the advanced standing students. So is there an advantage to submitting your intent to enroll slash paying your deposit when it comes to your field placement? Um, so the answer to that is, it depends. <laughs> um, and the reason it depends is we really want to make sure that if you are um, coming into the school that we can help plan, prepare, and uh, make sure that you have everything you need to succeed. So just sort of piggybacking off of what Taylor said, the earlier we can make the decision for you to come to the school, the earlier that we can help to prepare sort of those cheat sheets, we can help to prepare for your curriculum. You can meet with your academic advisor. You can meet with your field advisor. So is there an advantage? 
There can be if you are really specific about what it is you want to accomplish at the school. Um, so I would say, I would say, you know, the earlier you can get started, the earlier we can um, move you towards success and getting you onto your career as one of our colleagues as a social work, public health, or social policy professional. Yay! Okay. So I wanted to make a brief shout out to our international practicum, just again. Um, we also have specific concentrations that are geared to helping you to have those experiences. Um, but I don't want to get too deep into the weeds because again, I want you to have an opportunity to touch base with Tammy Orahood, who really specializes with our global program office. Um, so if you have an opportunity to just go and check out the website, it has really specific details about taking um, your international SED concentration um, and just spe specific courses that you um, want to take. So again, we're still here. We're still taking questions. So submit them beforehand. Um, let's see. What kinds of practicums can students approach at home or abroad? I'm just going to open that up to you all. I, okay, I could start or add to that, I guess. Yes. Um, since I feel like I've had um, a range of them, and I think that um, the Brown School does have a large student population that's interested in macro social work or policy or systems level work. Um, and so I would say you can work on a sort of very small neighborhood level for an organization, um, supporting residents or supporting um, individuals in any sort of specific area um, of service provision. Um, or you could work on a larger level um, for um, an organization that's supporting like regional system um, or policy. Um, or you can work in government, which I think is a really exciting opportunity. Um, there's opportunities at the local level to work with the Board of Aldermen um, here in St. Louis. Um, or at the state level, or if you do an out-of-state practicum, maybe where you're from, you can do it with an elected official there um, or in D.C. over the summer. So. Great. Mm -hmm. Did well, you have yeah. anything to add? I'm just, I want to make sure that this is about you and not <laughs> me. <laughs> I'm sure they had to talk to you all. Okay. Uh, there's a, whatever you want. As I mentioned, like, there, uh, I've reached out to many different places that had different things. Mm -hmm. It's definitely whatever you would want it to, as Sarah mentioned, like, local, mm -hmm. community, uh, state, even that internationally. So, like, there are many different ways. There's no one straight path to, uh, to practicums. Totally. There's no one size fits all. Mm -hmm. um, and that's also preparing you for the profession and that you really want to get a sense of what skills, what type of opportunities are meaningful for you. And we really start you here at orientation. Um, so you get to see some of the alum that are doing great work. You get to see what um, some of our um, faculty members are doing outside of the classroom. So you get to have a, a great sense of what is possible, which is what makes the Brown School so great. All right, hot question from the press. So it looks like, what does supervision look like in practicum? And how does practicum support, um, how does practicum support us as we develop clinical skills? For example, observation from a super, observation from supervision, et cetera. Okay, I'm gonna open this up to either of you because you all had great experience with supervision, thank God. <laughs> um, <laughs> in the field. <laughs> uh, I, there are times where you, especially meeting the ELA, so that's the Educational Learning Agreement, there is a portion where you have to meet with your supervisor that's directly in the field at least once a week, so you definitely have the supervision um, from the field itself. And this gives you... Yeah. <laughs> um, I think you kind of, well, especially for me, I was able to develop these skills uh, meeting weekly with my supervisor and getting a great understanding of like what she wanted for me and she asked of what I wanted to, for the outcome to look like. Um, so create that report with your supervisor and you could gain a lot of different things uh, from that interaction. I can talk about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, what I've really enjoyed about supervision, again, not clinical, um, on the macro side though, 
is that all of my supervision has been done by individuals who have experience in the area I'm working in, in the area I'm interested in, in the area I want to make a career in. And that's something, not necessarily something I've had before. Um, so whenever problems come up um, and you're trying to strategize how to get around those problems, those supervisors have been able to help me think through that from their own experience, which is incredibly valuable um, in my professional growth. And on, on the other side of that, there's a lot of mentoring that happens and just uh, developing me as an individual um, and not just as a professional, but just you know encouraging me to grow as a person. Um, yeah, I, I don't have too much that's totally different to add, but I've just really appreciated the opportunity. I know that for my um, racial equity fellowship in uh, practicum at the Brown School, um, I had the opportunity to have supervision from two different people, um, which was incredibly valuable to, to build relationships with both of them, um, which also helped connect me to another practicum. Um, and so I think that, that building those networks and really like taking the opportunity to get to know them and how um, your supervisors sort of ended up in their field and can help you um, is one of the really valuable opportunities of, of a practicum experience while in school. So I know we're coming pretty close to the end of time, but I just wanted to add a couple of things to that. Um, so for the clinical sites, because we have students who have done a lot of macro um, level work, for clinical sites, it may start as simple as an observation, so um, observing clients, observing groups, observing how to do an intake and an assessment, then slowly um, having sort of a collaborative approach to doing that work, and then as you begin to become more confident and comfortable, then you start leading. So it's more of an incremental approach to make sure that your skills are, that you're doing some knowledge building and skill building along with the um, with your supervisor and you usually have one hour a week to meet with your supervisor and you also have a team of other people who can also help you with gaining the knowledge that you have at your site so we are at 1237 so one of my last questions one of them not our final um, is sort of some of you are beginning your practicum Others have completed one or two already, but can you share some of the primary ways you spend your time at practicum or major projects you've worked on? And then just to follow up with just maybe a couple of skills you found yourself strengthening. Mm. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> uh, so for my first practicum, I spent about 80%, 75% of my time uh, doing research for the, um, for the resource guide. So that was a lot of like making phone calls, uh, looking up different organizations and seeing what type of, how they could best assist uh, breast cancer patients. And um, so I did a lot of that, but I also was able to go out into the community and do health fairs or, um, yeah, we mainly call them health fairs, but that's just when different organizations come and people from the community are able to come and get resources and talk with these places to see what type of things that they could glean from that. Um, what else? Have I, so currently at the city of St. Louis Department of Health, I am working on um, finding faith-based interventions. So again, a little bit more research. However, this is more collaborative, mm -hmm. where I get to work with other departments to see uh, the statistics that they are bringing in um, and seeing how that uh, works with other, um, how those things link together. So this is more about 40 to 50% of individual and then again, 40, 50% of like uh, collab team collaboration. Nice. So, yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, for my racial <clears throat> equity fellowship, uh, we're using a community participatory approach to our research. So we spend a lot of our time uh, thinking and just talking and figuring out what we're doing because we were designing the study from the ground up. And we do a lot of data work, but we also do a lot of work with people and interviews, and it's probably the most enjoyable part of it. And on uh, the Jeff City side of things, um, 
do a whole lot of things. It can range from uh, writing a policy brief uh, to researching food insecurity in North County uh, to meeting with legislators and lobbyists um, to talking strategy with uh, the senators. So um, I can't say 80% <laughs> of my time is spent on one thing. It's a, it's a whole lot of really different, exciting things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would just echo that, that probably there are more different things that I'm doing than one individual thing that's taking up a lot of time, um, which I personally really like. Obviously, mm -hmm. I had a lot of practical experience, too. Um, but I think that um, something that really stands out to me was in the Racial Equity Fellowship um, and continuing that into the work I'm doing now at We Power. But the idea um, of doing work that isn't necessarily like producing a report, um, but is about shaping conversations and how people are, are viewing something. And so I found it really valuable to continually meet with my supervisor and have these conversations about um, spending my time reading and, and talking to the other fellows and supervisor, but also thinking about how um, work can be like shifting thought and what does that look like and how do you quantify that and how um, are you okay with uh, maybe recognizing that that's how you're spending your time. That's really, really valuable. Um, and that's, that's what the work is um, in an experience like that, um, but isn't the production of a report. Um, and so that was great development for me. Absolutely. And for those of you who are really interested in doing clinical work, the work can look similar, where you're reading about um, how to engage with your clients and how to best do some group facilitation. Um, but one of the things I really want to make sure that you also um, have an opportunity to think about is using your um, fellow students as a resource. So the reason why we're even doing the virtual info session is students seem to be one of the best resources for getting a sense of what your practicum could look like and what kinds of skills you can have and how to break up your practicum and what kinds of questions to ask. Again, we are here as professionals, but your students, um, our students are our greatest ambassadors for the types of work you can do in the field. So please remember these beautiful faces because hopefully they'll be here when you get here and you can reach out to them and ask them questions that you would never dare to ask us. And so we are hopeful that when you do come here, um, that you're not only willing to use us as a resource, but that you're also willing to use each other um, and use our students who've been through the process um, and can help guide and inform your process as well. So last question, I want you to think back a long time ago in the galaxy <laughs> far, far away when you were first students, what advice do you wish you would have had? Or what advice would you like to give our prospective students here today before we wrap up? I'll yeah. pass that over you. <laughs> I can go. I've been thinking about this a lot. So the scariness and mm -hmm. ambiguity of practicum, uh, I feel has been a really growing experience. Mm. So my first semester of classes, I'm learning all of these new things, even though I'm coming with a BSW, um, like I'm growing so much. And because practicum is, uh, you have so much freedom in the process, you can grow along with that. So the scariness, like embrace it, embrace the nervousness and know that that most likely hopefully means you're growing through the process because whenever you graduate from your master's program, you're looking for a job, it's going to be just as scary, but now you know a lot more about yourself, what you're interested in, uh, what you can bring to the table um, to a job. And I think that is a very, very helpful experience to have. Um, I, I echo all of that, and I would just say like patience and that um, you will find the practicum experience. Um, and I think sometimes rushing in doesn't necessarily lead to the best fit. Um, and so allow yourself to um, embrace the whole process, but also not feel super rushed if someone else is super determined and knows what they want and has it lined up or has an interview in the first month. Um, it's, it's okay if it's not set by then. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you all so much for advancing social work, public health, and social policy. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, before we sign off, um, are there any additional questions from the audience? 
Okay, great. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to talk a little bit about a few announcements that we have. So please remember um, that we are here as your resource. We have admitted students resources, so please confirm your intent to enroll. This is where you'll find your financial aid resources and funding opportunities. Please look out for updates on our website. And we have some admission deadlines. So March 1st is our regular decision deadline. June 1st is our rolling admission. I'm sorry, March 2nd to June 1st is our rolling admissions. And then May 1st, is a great time to submit your intent to enroll. And then finally, we have the Save the Date Admitted Students Weekend will be on April 3rd and April 4th. I am looking forward to seeing many of your faces. Thank you so much for participating in our virtual info session. Please remember we have our next virtual info session on Thursday, February 6th, where you'll get to talk to some of our faculty. And please remember that your next steps is to apply for fall 2020. Again, we would love to have you um, apply to our school to advance not just social work, but public health and social policy. So with that, we wish you a great day and a wonderful admissions process. Thank you.